Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know, but you better get an ambulance or a cop car there or something, okay? Put another call in for Chuck E. Cheese. Um, pretty much what I'm going to say is for me. You did a lot of this for racial reasons, Nate, and uh, it's funny, huh? It is Just a moment, sir. The black Brown, man, the black man has been trying to raise up from oppression. Yeah, look, check it out. Man. Just enough. No black or white issue, right? Have you a know, seat, so sir, please. please. White attorneys and everything. Sit down, and two white police. Have a seat, please. Sit down, I got, I got white friends and white, got white girlfriends, man. I don't got nothing to come with no white people, man. You know sir, what I'm saying? you want to make this black white issue and everything? We can do that, Mike. Right? Let's sir. do it. Let's do it, bud. That'll be enough, Mr. Crow. Man, I don't give a fuck about you, your mama, your whole motherfucking family, Mike. Right? You know what I'm saying? Nice seat, no? sir. I don't give a fuck about you, Mike. Right? Sit down, baby. Come on, Nathan. I don't even give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can kill me right now. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Have a seat. So fuck about none of this motherfucking shit, right? Have a seat, Mr. Dunlap. It's enough. Mr. Crow. I'm not done with you. What, what you want to do, Mike? I'm, I'm right here. Hey. Sit down, Mr. Dunlap. You're not worth it, bud. Just a moment, sir. Shut the fuck up and go someplace, then. You know what I'm saying? Sit man? down, please, Mr. Dunlap. Now. That's enough. That is enough. This is enough. You know what I'm saying? If you want to keep on going around this, I mean, he can get up here and say anything he want, Mike. But when you try to attack me personally and everything, what am I supposed to do? You attack all our family. Just a moment, me. sir. Wait, which one? Just a moment. I ain't take none of your motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, Mr. Dunlap. Y'all know shit. Sit down, Mr. Dunlap. This is funny sir. to me. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, please, Mr. Peters. Right now, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, please, sir. Mr. Peters, Mr. Lewis, you be, approach Only Mr. people you'll be hurting is right. these motherfuckers out here. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, Mr. That's who you want to hurt. You want to you want to hurt them just like look, just like you said. I hurt them. Deputies Your restrain the defendants. Sit down. Put some cuffs on. Put the butt. Put the cuffs on. You know what I'm saying? Still motherfucking talk. Sit down, sir. Put the cuffs on. Shit. Take me to the motherfucking little chair, whatever the fuck y'all got right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a butt. Shit. Punk ass fuck. Sit down. Have a seat. Have a seat. Don't give a fuck, man. Y'all know this bullshit, man. Don't give a fuck, man. Y'all, why y'all do shit right there? You know what I'm saying? Shit. I'm just fucking fuck. You want to recess, Mr. Lewis? I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Short I'm sorry. recess. I'm sorry, dude. I can't do this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Take the fuck about this fuck. Hey, I can't run no motherfucking When I saw the last couple at the counter getting their little prizes and stuff, I went to the men's room. You go into the men's room and you look in the mirror. Right. I was I was still kind of iffy on it, and you know I went ahead and kind of like I said hyped myself up and came out and started shooting. When you were hyping yourself up, what were you doing? Just looking in the mirror, like, are you really gonna do this? And I'm like, yeah. So like, sort of, like, talked to myself. And so you got hyped up and you walked straight out. Walked straight out the bathroom. And shot Sylvia. It wants to happen, it was all Does it bother you that they're dead, Nathan? No. Why? I guess because for me, death ain't nothing. I don't, I'm not afraid of death. And you didn't take the time to think that their life was so important to somebody you. else, right? So you walk out of the bathroom. You've decided what? She's about to die. These people have to die. Are about to die. These people are about to die. Mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the salad bar. I didn't see, uh, see, I didn't hear the music. Uh, it was like a, 
of blackness. It just empty. Sylvia, kind, sparkle, a shining light. Her family and friends adored her. Where was Sylvia? At the cell bar. Did she see you? No. It was like she had a glow around her, so to speak. So you just held the gun up and fired but looked the other way? I knew where she looked. I knew where she was standing. I knew she didn't see. And I, I mean, in my head, I so I could see the target, so to speak. And I placed the gun there. And I know she got shot. When, when that first shot went off, everybody jumped, including me. And like I said, I mean, it happened so quick. Before Sylvia even hit the ground, because I heard her fall. I had already shot. What's his name? Ben. How far away from him were you? Probably closer. Probably closer than we are down. Ben Grant. Fun. Loving. Full of life. He was part of so many people's futures. I remember the sound went off. And, he, and when he jumped, I jumped because it scared me. I shot him. And I spun him back the same way he was coming around. I spun him the other back around the same way and that was the last thing I saw I never saw him hit the ground or nothing and then you know I was already turned around going toward uh, Colleen Colleen she was 17 strong vibrant funny they miss her so much and Colleen saw you coming yeah I don't understand why she sat there and watched I was expecting her to run but she didn't run that's why I turned around so quick but she didn't run she stayed right there Watch. And what happened if she had run? I was shot her. Did you ever ha have eye contact with Colleen? Oh, yeah. That's what brought me kind of down. Did Colleen say anything? She's like, no. She was like, she shook her hand, like, no. But she did say no. Yes, yeah, she said no. I said, she didn't, she didn't beg for her life or nothing like that. What if she had Nathan? When she said no, she sort of begged, you know. She, she you know, she sort of begged. And it pissed me off because it kind of like bought, people going to say I don't have compassion, but I know I got compassion. And it bought this compassion. Now I'm like, you know, why are you doing this to me? You know, why are you trying to make me like you? You know, it's easy to shoot you when I don't like you. And it's like, you know, why are you trying to make me like you? Because she said no? When she said no, it's like she's kind of big, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you just sit here and watch me shoot two people. What do you, what do you mean, no? Do you understand why she was looking for compassion? Oh, yeah, I totally understand. I agree with her and everything. Nathan, why? Why what? Why Kill. did you kill him? They were witnesses who were crying. That's why. Did you have any feeling? I had no feelings at all. Excitement? No, the excitement, I'm not. But Colleen brought that back. Right. And what were you thinking at the time? I didn't have no choice. Why? Everybody always has a choice. Because she had seen me shoot two other people. It is going to be inconceivable to people who finally hear this that you didn't have any feelings about human life. I didn't have any feelings about human life until... After I shot Colleen. And what did you feel? I felt like, how can I do this? And I was like, well, you started, you gotta keep on finishing. And when you thought, how could you do this? What did you think of yourself? I was just sad. I'm not explaining to you. I was just sad. But you kept going. I had to finish it. I had to finish. Bobby Stevens lived. He wants the families to know how hard he tried to help them and how sorry for them he is. You fired, he ducked. Yeah. You hit him. Yeah. Did you think you killed him? No, I knew I didn't kill him. Why didn't you stop and shoot him again? I don't like blood. You don't like blood? No. I would have to. If I was to do that, I'd have to sit there and watch him. 
Margaret Kohlberg was a mother, a wife, a best friend. Radiant, supportive. Life without her will never be the same. I went to the office and Margaret looked up and said, can I help you or something? And she saw the gun. And uh, that's when I heard Bobby get up and run out. Had her open up the safe and I shot her. And Margaret was still alive. I didn't want her to suffer or nothing. That's why I shot her a second time. I didn't shoot her because she was going to identify me or something. I knew she was messed up already, and I didn't want her. She sounded like she was in pain. So that's why I shot her again. And you walked out of Chucky e. Jesus. Jog, ran. He left, went to a friend's, and counted the money, then to his girlfriend's. Both places, he thought the same thing. It's hard to believe. Four people died. Basically, to me, their lives were only worth uh, three or four hundred dollars a piece. You see a lot in their faces, humor, courage, fear. But there is something else most of us don't have, a weariness, a pain, a haunted look. It comes from being the family and friends of someone killed suddenly in a violent crime. They are here to see if seeing Nathan Dunlap talk for the first time about killing someone they love very much will help it all. Here's part of what they saw. If you had to use one word or two words or three words to describe what you have done in killing those people, what would those words be? It was wrong. It was wrong? Yeah. I shouldn't have killed them. I shouldn't have robbed them. I should have just left them alone. They didn't do nothing to me. If you were to get out again, would you kill? Unless they stood in the way of something. If they was hurting me, I killed them, yeah. Would take no problem. Do you realize how cold that is? Yes. And what do you think of yourself as a result of it? I still don't have a problem with it. Would you describe yourself as a human being? Yeah. I'm breathing, I'm, my heart's pumping and everything. Do you have a soul? Do you have a conscience? Yeah, I have a soul, I have a conscience. Who cares what the people think about me? Should you have killed Sylvia? No, I shouldn't have. Should you have killed Ben? No. Should you have killed Colleen? I shouldn't have killed anybody. I shouldn't have robbed that place. The fact is, I did, though. Should anybody care about you? I really don't care if they do or not. Let me ask it this way. Why should anybody care about you? I don't care. You don't understand. I don't care about nobody. I don't care. I don't care about anybody watching it. I don't care. The only people I care about is my family and my friends. That's all I care about. I don't care about nobody else. Do you have nightmares about this? I, I did. What were the nightmares like? Just replay everything that happened. What should your penalty be? If you want to make me hurt, life in jail. But still, I'll figure out how to make that better for me. Why not death? Life in prison because? I gotta sit here and basically rot to death. What happens when you, you say that you believe in life ever after, you believe in heaven, that you believe you'll go to heaven? What happens when you see Sylvia and Ben and Colleen and Mrs. Colbert in heaven? Hopefully they'll forgive me, but I gotta keep going on. If they don't, I gotta keep going on. I'm not gonna let them bring me down. In heaven? Wherever, wherever I be, anybody had as anybody. Somebody wants to, you know, I want to apologize and stuff, but I can't do nothing about it. That's all I can do. Nathan Dunlap believes the death penalty is used more out of hate and revenge than anything else. If you want to kill me so bad, then come do it. That's my attitude. Isn't that kind of a macho, bravado type thing? It ain't macho to me or nothing, but I'm not saying it's macho or nothing, but. fact is, I killed four people. I almost killed a fifth. I want them dead, and they're dead. Come kill me then. If you think you, if you think you can take my life, come do it. I'm gonna take yours before you take mine. Maybe seeing this gave the family some relief, 
but maybe not. Only they can tell you. Just into 7 News, new video of Nathan Dunlap, this imagery and a DVD given by his lawyers to Governor Hickenlooper today. They say the condemned killer had an undiagnosed bipolar disorder when he killed four people at an Aurora Chuck E. Cheese restaurant 20 years ago. 7 News reporter Jacqueline Allen live. Now, Jacqueline, the lawyers say that condition means he shouldn't be executed. Yeah, Nathan Dunlap wrote a letter to saying he does feel regret, sadness, and grief for what he did. He apologizes. And for the first time in almost 20 years, he speaks on camera saying he's thinking about the victims' families. I do not want to cause the victims' families, Bobby Stevens, anybody, any more pain that I've already caused. In this video, we hear from his friends, his sister, his attorneys. His legal team is arguing that he had undiagnosed bipolar disorder and he's received effective treatment in prison. Because of that, they are asking Governor Hickenlooper to grant clemency. It's been almost 19 years since the Chuck E. Cheese shootings where he shot five people, killing four former co-workers. The governor has said he has not yet made a decision about clemency, but he knows there is a sense of urgency. A judge last week set the execution date for the week of August 18th. We are watching the video and sorting through all of the petition documents right now, and we'll have more on this developing story tonight at 10. Live in the newsroom, Jacqueline Allen, 7 News. If the state of Colorado is going to have to take the responsibility of, of executing someone, the system should be flawless. And because it's not, the governor of Colorado grants a reprieve to convicted killer Nathan Dunlap. 7 News with the stunning developments live just three hours ago. Dunlap will not be executed for killing four people and injuring a fifth at this Aurora Chuck E. Cheese restaurant 20 years ago. The point of having a temporary reprieve rather than clemency is really out of of respect to all the, the jurors and judges, the prosecutors and defense attorneys, the expert witnesses, uh, the, the respect to the, the rule of law in the state of Colorado, we're not, we're not overturning that. But I recognize as, as governor, uh, I could not find the justice in making that decision. Seven News with team coverage of the governor's decision. I was in the governor's office 90 minutes ago to ask him why and how he came to that decision. Seven News reporter Amanda Cost there as victims' family members received the news. And call Seven investigator Teresa Marchetta breaking the story online. She's live outside the Capitol talking to the district attorney who prosecuted the case. District Attorney George Brockler uh, here on the west steps of the Capitol earlier, flanked by victims, family members, and former prosecutors, hammering the governor for what he says is his inability to make a decision. I spoke with him one on one right afterwards. So, to be 20 years and 20 miles removed from one of the most heinous acts of violence in the history of this state, and here, I'm just not sure, does not feel like an act of courage. It is certainly not leadership. And my best guess is it's not what Coloradoans expected from a governor who was sworn in to execute the laws of this state. What was your first thought, your first response? Internally, it was words that probably can't be spoken here, but it's a real head scratcher. I did not see that coming. I was prepared to be uh, frustrated and disappointed at the wrong decision. I was prepared also to be optimistic about our future given the right decision but I was not prepared for no decision and make no mistake no matter how the governor's office tries to spin this a reprieve is not a decision it is a shrug for someone who professed to do this out of respect for the victims he has left this seeping wound open is this going to impact your office and how you prosecute cases in the future well, no, because I can say with a significant amount of confidence, I do respect the people of the state of Colorado, and I respect the laws on their books, and I will continue to enforce them as someone who is an elected representative of them. Uh, I'm not going to substitute my will and my judgment for the laws that are on the books right now. I, I don't think that's courage, and I don't think it's leadership. And Brockler tells me he plans to scrutinize the governor's decision with the help of the attorney general's office, but it's unlikely that decision can be appealed. Live from the state capitol, I'm Call 7 investigator Teresa Marchetta. Thanks, Teresa. And that district attorney also telling 7 News there's only one person going to bed with a smile on his face tonight, and that is Nathan Dunlap. Well, we spoke with Dunlap's attorney 90 minutes ago who took issue with that statement. He's not going to bed with a smile tonight. Mr. Dunlap faces the rest of his life in a cell that's about the size of two king-size beds, from which he gets out maybe an hour a day. 
maybe Mr. Brockler needs to understand what punishment is really like. Now, we are told Dunlap will remain in administrative segregation, meaning solitary confinement in Sterling, where he's been since June of 1996. Seven News there is one victim's father, Bob Crowell, talks to the governor on the phone and first learns of this decision. Seven News reporter Amanda Koss getting his reaction immediately after she continues our team coverage live right now. And Bob Crowell was sitting down for the news at his family dining room table on a conference call with the governor and other victims' family members, telling Seven News it's not the reprieve, but the governor's reasoning why that caught him off guard. Three teenagers and a mother of two were shot to death as they worked inside this Aurora Chuck E. Cheese restaurant in 1993. Nathan Dunlap was convicted of the murders. He's been sitting on death row since 1996 and was scheduled to be put to death in August until today. In prison without parole the rest of his life. Bob Crowell's daughter, Sylvia, one of the four murdered. Crowell and other victims' family members on a conference call with Governor John Hickenlooper. Raised voices heard through the headset and on this end. Governor, this is Bob Crowell. Crowell wanting to know how much money has been spent oh. since Dunlap's trial. Keep in mind that the money can't make a tenth as much difference as having lost our daughters and sons. Governor John Hickenlooper responding. He just said, I can't see myself executing someone. This father shaking he his head. Twelve jurors all said put him to death for what he has done and the governor has turned that upside down. And Bob's wife, Marge, speaking with 7 News off camera, telling us that since day one of this, they have been leaning on their faith for comfort. And at this point, she knows that her daughter, Sylvia, she says, quote, is in God's hands. But that only brings a certain amount of comfort right now. Reporting live, Amanda Cost, 7 News.